Welcome back everyone. Before we proceed further, there is a small update that I need to inform you about. The series was initially recorded with Storybook version 5.3. But on August 11th, 2020, Storybook version 6 was released. There were a lot of improvements and new features included as part of that release. Of course, I want to make sure when you're going through this playlist, you're learning the latest version. The good thing is a lot of the existing videos do hold good for version 6 as well. But there are a few videos which need minor changes and there are a few new features for which videos need to be recorded. To make sure that you're not confused when going through this playlist, here is what I'm going to do. For every video that is newly recorded after version 6 was released, I'm going to add v6 in the title. That way, you'll know that it only works with version 6. I'll leave the version 5 videos as they are for reference, but slightly alter the number of that video. For example, this video, which is getting started with v6, would be 2.1, whereas getting started with version 5 would be 2.2. That way, you know that both the videos are related. Also, in the newly created videos, I'll talk about the relevance of the supporting version 5 videos. The entire playlist, even with the new videos, should not take more than 2 hours of your time and the version 5 videos will still be helpful like I mentioned. I hope you can understand that re-recording the entire playlist is difficult for me and with the points I've mentioned, you'll still be able to watch and learn from the videos in the series. With that in mind, let's get started with version 6 of Storybook. In this video, we are going to set up Storybook in a React application. Now the first thing I have to mention is that I have created a new React project using Create React App. So go ahead and run the command npx create react app followed by your project name. I have named the project as React Storybook version 6. Now let's install Storybook in our React application. In the terminal within the project folder, run the command npx sb init. It seems like a simple command, but it does a lot of work behind the scenes. During this installation process, Storybook will look into your project's dependencies and provide you with the best configuration available. The command detects that we are running a Create React App project and installs the necessary dependencies and creates new files. Let's take a look at the changes that were done. The first change that is done is the installation of the required dependencies. In the package.json file, you can see that we have new dev dependencies installed. Storybook is required only during development. Hence, all the dependencies are dev dependencies. We have React Storybook version 6, a preset for Create React App, and a few add-on packages. These add-ons are basically additional features for our storybook, which we will learn later on in the series. We also have Babel Core, Babel Loader, and React East Package, which are all dependencies required by Storybook. The second change that is done is the addition of two scripts. One to run Storybook in dev mode, and the other to build it for production. The third change is the addition of the default Storybook configuration. At the top level, within the project folder, the Storybook init command creates a Storybook folder. This folder pretty much contains any configurations that you want to add to Storybook. If you inspect the folder, you can see that we have two files, main.js and preview.js. From main.js, we export an object with two properties. The first one is stories. This basically indicates that all files within the source folder that end with the extension .stories.mdx or end with one of js, jsx, ts or tsx have to be treated as stories for our storybook app. 
And then we have an entry for add-ons that were installed as well. We will talk about add-ons later in the series. The other file is preview.js, which contains configuration for your stories. So you could say main.js is the configuration file for Storybook itself, whereas preview.js is the configuration file for the stories that you write. The fourth and final change that Storybook init command does is add some boilerplate stories to get you started. In the source folder, the command creates a folder called stories and within the stories folder, it creates an assets folder and several files. We have an introduction.stories.mdx file, which is the landing page when you run Storybook. And we have three components, a button component, a header component, and a page component. Each of the components have a JS file where the component is defined, a CSS file where the styling is defined, and a .stories.js file which contains the stories corresponding to that component. For example, if I open button.js, you can see that we have the button component with the CSS imported. If I open the stories file, we have the button component imported, a default export, and several named exports. Each of the named exports returns some JSX, which is what we call as a story in Storybook. We will learn how to create a story from scratch in the next video, but right now, we are ready to run our Storybook app. In the terminal, run the command yarn storybook. This will run the script that the init command added for us in package.json. In the browser, we should be able to see our Storybook app. The landing page here is the introduction.stories.mdx file. A simple page by the Storybook team to make you aware of the different resources at your disposal. On the left hand side, we have three entries in the side nav. These correspond to the three stories that were created for us. In the button story, you can see that we export four components. Primary, secondary, large and small. The same are present in button.stories.js. Similar is the case with heading and page. Nothing too fancy in the code, but to be able to isolate the code and visualize it makes all the difference. You can pretty much create stories for all the presentation components in your application. This makes team development and collaboration much more effective. Throughout this series, we will be focusing on only two things writing code in VS Code and visually seeing that in the Storybook browser app. There are a few elements in the UI as well, as you can see, and we will talk about them as we progress through the series. But this is pretty much a basic Storybook app. Now, the next video is pretty much the same as this video, but for version 5.3. So if you're on an older version, please watch the next video. If you're on version 6, I highly recommend you skip the next video and jump to the video on writing stories. That video picks up from version 5 series but should in no way affect the content that you are going to learn. Thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe and see you guys in the next video.